Good morning. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. So, I'm going to get that guitar out again this morning. I'm going to do something a little bit different with it. Um, there's a song that I've been working on since I began my flamenco studies. Uh, basically, how it happened was that I just started uh, my started practicing the, the flamenco techniques, and I used this particular tune because basically I started stringing those techniques together and it turned into this tune that I'm about ready to start working on. So anyway, I wanted to talk to you a little bit this morning about um, the, and, and this, is, this is something that most people don't know in the Western church. Uh, uh, they're not being taught these things because they, frankly, they don't know about them. Um, is that uh, the Virgin Mary, according to Orthodox teachings, never lost her virginity her, her whole life. Um, and the story goes that Joachim and Anna, who are the parents of the Virgin Mary, um, wanted to turn her over to and give her back to the Lord. So they presented her to the priest at the temple so that she could be a temple virgin. Now, uh, the Virgin Mary expressed her desire to be a lifelong virgin and serve only the Lord. And so now she went to the temple. Um, uh, they brought her to the temple and uh, she they presented her to the priest. Well, she was a sweet little girl and really cute. And so she was allowed, believe it or not, to come up into the men's quarters since she was uh, just a child. She was allowed to come up into the men's side of the temple. Now, back in those days, the temple was segregated. Today, of course, we're not segregated. Uh, Christ opened the way and said there's neither uh, male nor female, bond nor Greek, or bond nor free. A Greek nor Jew in Christ. Uh, but that don't mean that, you know, that there is an order. God, Christ didn't come and abolish an order because there is an order first, male, then female, and then the children. So uh, anyway, um, she was brought into the temple and uh, she was quite amusing to the, to the priest. And they allowed her to come into the men's section of the temple. Uh, a full grown woman wouldn't be allowed in there, but a little child, it was, it was a different matter. And so one day uh, she ran behind the veil um, in the temple. And of course, they were all they all just uh, gasped and held their breath because priests had to wear bells on the hems of their garment uh, and have a rope tied to their ankle. When a priest went in, the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, if he wasn't ritually clean and pure, then he would die in there. And so when a priest died in the Holy of Holies, there's no way anybody could go in to uh, bring them back out. So they tied a rope on their ankle so they could drag them out. If the bells quit tinkling, they knew that the priest had died. And so they expected her to die in there, uh, you know, to their um, grief. But however, she came back out of there alive, out from behind the veil. And they were like, isn't that amazing? She's a very special girl. Uh, well, you know, um, in the day that the Virgin Mary was in the temple, um, they did not have the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was no longer there, but the Holy of Holy was an empty room. And so in the Orthodox Church, we it is taught uh, that the Virgin Mary herself is the Ark of the Covenant. So there was no need for a, a man-made uh, box covered with gold because the Virgin Mary herself became the repose. Of the de de she it, Within her was deposited the Word of God himself, which is the living Word of God, who is Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is the Logos. He is literally the living Word of God. Within her womb, she carried the Word of God. And yet, as we know, the Bible says that the Lord is a consuming fire. And yet, the fire of God in her womb did not destroy her. It did not burn her up. And so, therefore... The Lord had protected her and made her into the new Ark of the Covenant. Now, there's no need for the Ark of the Covenant because Mary herself, the God-bearer, the Theotokos, was the Ark of the Covenant, the new Ark of the Covenant, and hence the new Eve, from whence comes forth the Word of God. Uh, now, in the Ark, uh, they had the tablets that were that Moses brought down from the mountain, Sinai, and the rod that um, Aaron of, of the priest Aaron, that which budded in the wilderness, and uh, vessels of, of uh, what is it, manna, that they gathered, which uh, normally the manna would decay within. They instructed, of course, to take only enough for the next day. Um, any, excuse me, any of the manna that was left over would decay and rot, and they were expected to take extra on the, 
the Friday so that they would have enough to go on the Sabbath because they were not allowed to do any work. So Mary became the deposit of all of those things, the manna, the bread from heaven, which is Jesus Christ himself, and the word of God, which is Jesus Christ himself, hence the tablets of the law written on human flesh, and the rod of, of Aaron, which budded. He is the son of God who will rule the earth and the world and mankind with a rod of iron. So, as we know, uh, in the Orthodox Church, uh, if you're in the Western Church, you may not know this, uh, that Mary reposed, we call it the Dormition of the Theotokos. Uh, she, she was taken bodily into heaven. Um, they went to look for her. I, I, I'll have to research the story and give you a more accurate account of it. But to put it in a nutshell, um, when they went to, to view the body, uh, she was no longer there, but she was taken directly to the throne of God. And we teach that she was an ever perpetual virgin. Uh, he came forth from her wound and yet did not destroy her virginity. So they, when she wanted to be uh, a lifelong virgin, they respected that. And so in order to preserve her virginity, um, a retired priest uh, was betrothed to her. His name is Joseph. That's why when you go into an Orthodox church and you see an icon of Joseph, he has gray hair. He was much older than her. And so I just want to give you a little share that with you today. Uh, we're getting ready to go uh, and practice the Theophany. That's our next feast. Um, my friend called me this morning and asked me, how do you know these things? I go, well, they teach them. He said, well, I came down to your wedding blessing. And they didn't talk about any of that stuff. I go, well, that's because they only teach you on the day of the feast. Like if we, you went to the Orthodox Church on the day of the Theophany and on the day of the, of the Dormition, they would tell you stories about the Virgin Mary. So if you don't want to miss out and you, want, and you don't want to feel left out and you want to find the bedrock of the truth about the Virgin uh, Birth and the Virgin Mary and the Savior, uh, then you would come to the Orthodox Church and learn. Because in the Orthodox Church, they don't want you to be in ignorance. They want you to know these things. And uh, a person would learn things and read, especially read the Bible. They encourage you to read the Bible. Uh, they would bring their questions back to the priest and the priest would explain things to them. Explain it uh, in the way that the church and the traditions of the church fathers and the tr traditions of the apostles would have you learn. So I'm going to bring out this guitar again. Um, again, it is what it is. It's just a Western jumbo guitar. Um, Thank you. 
a uh, little song that I kind of invented, so to speak, to uh, string the techniques together so that I could develop a smooth tra a smooth transaction between the techniques. Is that is that really a, a good term? I don't know. If if you are a, a guitar player, flamenco player, please advise me on these terms so that I will be proper in my terminology. But anyway, uh, again, we say in the Orthodox Church, Christ is born, and the re response is glorify him. Glory to God. Have a good day, folks.